Um, and namaste, guys. Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consulting, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Friday afternoon here in Denver, Colorado. It's about 3.30 p.m. Mountain Time. I want to jump on earlier than we usually do these streams. We usually do them around 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night. But uh, I want to do the stream early today, do some healings this afternoon and into the evening, do Adriana, do my meditation practice differently and then upload a bunch of videos to our YouTube channel. If you're not following or subscribe to us on YouTube and you enjoy, I don't know, the look of my face or the type of clothes I wear or the message that we share about energy healing and meditation and practical spirituality, feel free to, to uh, subscribe to us at uh, YouTube at Christian R. Long. It's my name. Super easy. Can't miss it. Um, so I want to jump on and have you guys watch me drink a LaCroix. Oh, still waiting for the referral check from them. And I wanted to, uh, I was flipping through one of my favorite Golden Lotus Sutra books by my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Kuksui, who you see on the back wall right over here. And I was flipping through and I was like, what would be a message that would be relevant to people today? What would be something that you guys get some benefits from some nuggets, some insights? Uh, Ignacio Atmanamaste, welcome. I love the name. Autumn Atmanamaste, good to have you on. You're becoming more regular again. It's so beautiful. How's the weather where you're at? Probably cold. Um, and so, as you guys know, Grandmaster Cho Kuksui wrote about seven of these little books. He wrote many more books, but he wrote these little handy books you can stick in your, your purse or your back pocket in your pants or your jacket pocket and refer to them to be inspired, to be educated, to be um, energetically charged. And so these are called sutras. And a sutra is basically a sentence by a great, great spiritual teacher that's used to instill light within the disciple to dispel darkness or ignorance or blind spot that the disciple has in order to move their lives forward. So I was flipping through, flipping through. I was like, oh, that's a good one, but not relevant. That's a good one that's not relevant. That's a good one that maybe people aren't ready to listen to. Angela, I'm going to stay. So I was flipping through, flipping through, and I was like, ah, this might be relevant to you guys. It might be beneficial to you guys. So how many of us, raise your hand, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart. I'm going to start asking you guys to start doing some more, what's it called? Um audience participation. You've ever heard that term before? When I used to teach face-to-face -face in Denver, we would have hundreds of people come to our events every single month, and I would ask questions constantly. Why? Because I want people to be engaged. And when you're engaged, right, you're receiving energy. When you're passively sitting there, staring at the screen, not verbalizing, not participating, the energy is not going into you as well, right? So the goal is to have you absorb the energy, to have you interact. Even if you're watching this as a replay, it's still going to benefit you in real time. So when I say yes and you agree, say yes. When I say no and you agree, say no, right? Is that fair? Yes, perfect, wonderful, great. We're figuring this out together. So audience participation is great. Throw out the hearts, throw out the thumbs, throw out the mad faces, throw out anything in a way of building up receptivity, because that's what we're going to be covering in today's little nuggets, if you will. So how many of us have a negative connotation to the word surrender? A negative connotation to the word surrender. Because surrendering and a lot of perceptions, thanks Autumn, surrendering and a lot of perceptions means to, to give up your willpower and your mental faculties and even resources to another person, another organization, another entity, which means you are disempowered, which means you have less than. Doug, Atma Namaste, does that make sense? So that's why in very much so in the Western culture to surrender, even in the military context, surrendering means what? The, uh, the weaker military force is surrendering to the stronger military force. So it's not really a good thing when that happens. But on the spiritual path, the word surrender means something entirely different. It actually empowers the individual versus disempowers the individual. So 
there's a chakra. We covered it a little bit um, a couple days ago called the Ajna Chakra, which is in between the eyebrows. The Ajna Chakra deals with higher will, deals with abstract thinking. It controls and regulates the prana flow of the chakras below it. That's why it's called the Master Chakra. It's like the Washington, D.C. of the energy body, right? This chakra is connected to our higher self, to our higher soul. This chakra gives us the ability to do the right thing, not when we feel like it or not when it's convenient, but when it's the right thing to do, because the right thing to do is the right thing to do, right? So working out is the right thing to do, but how many times do we feel like not working out? So that's the lack of Ajna chakra, and that's the um, activation of the solar plexus chakra, which is like, I don't feel, right, the chakra of feeling, I don't feel like working out. So you subjugate or you surrender your higher will to your lower will. Interesting, right? Like, why would you do that? Why would you give up? So the Ajna chakra is super, super, super important. So when you're in the presence of a great, great spiritual teacher, a great facilitator of energy, when you spend time with them, they empower you and they strengthen your Ajna Chakra, right? They are empowering you. They are providing you with a stronger link and connection to your higher self because that's their specialization, right? Versus someone who is trying to take your willpower, your mental faculties, your financial, emotional, sexual resources. That's what a cult is called. So if you scan or feel the energy of somebody that's in a cult, the cult leader has a bigger Ajna chakra because he is plugged into the Ajna chakras of the followers and he is siphoning energy from those individuals. And then if you scan the Ajna chakra of the followers of that cult, right, their Ajna chakras are smaller, underactivated, and depleted. That's how you know if someone's in a cult or not, energetically speaking. There are obviously behavioral things to look for, psychological things to look for, but when you're in the presence of a true teacher who is trying to pave the way for you to evolve and to become a better person, a better soul, instead of your asana getting smaller and depleted, it gets bigger and more energized. So you become empowered. It's beautiful. It's not common, but it's beautiful when it happens. So how does this connect to surrendering? So I want to read a few of the sutras in this book that I think will benefit you. When you have inner, and again, this is called Creative Transformation from the Golden Lotus Sutra books by Grandmaster Cho Koksui. You can buy them for $12 on uspranichealing.com. U.S., like United States, uspranichealing.com, $12. When you have inner conductivity... Your development is accelerated. The purpose of being spiritually conductive is to be able to plug into the spiritual energy of the teacher. So, do you think if you have a lot of negative thoughts about the teacher, and this could be any teacher, negative thoughts about the teacher, preconceived ideas, judgments, criticisms, anger, well, those are more emotions, When you have preconceived ideas, limiting beliefs, and calcified thought forms about that person of who and what they are, do you think that helps with your conductivity to their energy or weakens your conductivity to their energy? It weakens it, right? Also, if you have negative feelings directed towards that person, like um, irritation, aggravation, bitterness, resentment, um, fear, anxiousness, Do you think those help with your conductivity to that person's energy or weakens your conductivity to that person's energy? Weakens it, right? So those negative thoughts and those negative feelings have to be dealt with and you have to surrender those things in order to be more conductive and more receptive to that person, right? Being conductive from the point of view of the intellect is the smart thing to do. Being conductive from the point of view of the will is the practical thing to do. Yeah. 
So remember we talked about this in other streams that our essential nature, we are a being of light, a being of love, and a being of power. That's our essential nature. Removing our bodies, our physical, emotional, mental bodies, we are being of light, being of love, and being of power, right? Light, love, and power. Light is intelligence. Love is the ability to provide, to nurture and nourish on many levels. And then will is the ability to manipulate matter, to move things from one thing to another, to change a negative emotion into a positive emotion, a, a one thought into another kind of thought, to move your physical body is a form of physical will. So we are a being of light, love, and power on many different planes, right? So when you are being conductive to a great spiritual teacher, you are... It's the smart thing to do because you're absorbing those energies. You're tapping into those energies, right? It would kind of be similar to if you want to learn how to become wealthy and prosperous and you had a multimillionaire sitting in front of you willing to teach you, but you, Jillian, I'm a namaste, but you were completely closed down and shut off to that person. Ron, I'm a namaste. Good to have you back on. Does that make sense? Adriana has to leave. She's traveling right now. She'll check out the stream later. She won the uh, she won the uh, the sweepstakes that we were doing of the free pranic healing session. So that's good for her. Two hundred twenty five dollar session, free because she's always on the streams, always adding value, always asking questions, always sharing, always liking. So, this goes into our main point. What are you surrendering? Remember we talked about. So, what is this thing like? The Western mindset has a negative connotation to surrendering. So from the spiritual perspective, we're talking about surrendering. What are we surrendering? Pride, arrogance, old ideas, old vices, anger and irritation, pain and obstructing attitudes. Doesn't that sound amazing if we can surrender those things? Because by removing all of those Lower, older, negative vibrations, it allows what? Energy, fresh energies to come down into our system to make us more conductive, more receptive to higher vibrational energies that are what? Transformative. Ego, exactly. Autumn gets it. So in the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi that we practice within the Twin Hearts meditation that was taught to us by Grandmaster Cho Koksui, it, it, the one of the final stanzas is, it is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. It is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Well, what is the thing that is dying? The ego, the personality, the old ways of being that are preventing us or obstructing us from connecting to higher vibrational energies that can transform our lives. Think about this. Does anger vibrate high or low? Low, right? Does depression vibrate high or low? Low, right? Does fear and anxiety vibrate high or low? Vibrates low. So by letting go of fear and anger and irritation and old vices and old ways of thinking and old ways of being and old ways of feeling, right? We're able to access higher vibrational energies. So what are those higher vibrational energies? Love, joy, enthusiasm, tenderness, bliss, stillness, right? I remember one time Grandmaster Cho Kuksui was saying that the ability to sit, close your eyes and be still, have stillness and have inner peace is a manifestation of good karma. Do you guys hear what I said? The ability to sit, to close your eyes and to have stillness and to have inner peace is a function of good karma because there are a lot of people on the planet that have no stillness and have no inner peace, whether they're awake, whether they're sitting with their eyes closed, or whether they're sleeping. Their entire lives are filled with chaos and drama and anger and fear and worry and stress. So they have no inner stillness and no inner peace. So just the fact that you can sit 
with your eyes closed and have some level, Shannon, I'm a namaste, have some level of peace and stillness as a manifestation of your good karma. So that's pretty cool. So conductivity can be increased by doing invocation and salutation. Do these with consciousness, with the fire of the heart, and with love. So what is an invocation? Sometimes, for those of you who jump onto the streams, you'll see we do an invocation maybe before the stream, or right at the beginning of the stream, or at the end of the stream. Whoops. An invocation is simply a prayer. You're praying to God, and then you're praying down the energies, you're stepping down the energies so your bodies can absorb them and you can live a higher quality of life. You can connect. So you start with the highest first to the Supreme God, Divine Father, Divine Mother, to my spiritual teacher, to all the great, great ones, holy gurus, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, healing angels, healing ministers, to my divine self, to my higher soul. Jason, Amma Namaste. Um, I uh, humbly ask for your divine light, divine love, and divine power with thanks and in full faith, so be it. That would be an example of an invocation. And if you do that on a regular basis, it starts to melt away your inner resistance. It starts to melt away the anger, fear, anxiety, stress, which allows the high, which gives you access to the higher energies that we talked about earlier. It's quite the blessing, right? It's quite the gift. So this is really cool. Um, also, to add to this a little bit, right? Not to add, but to clarify, conduct, conductivity can be increased by doing invocation and salutation. Do these with consciousness, with the fire of the heart, and with love. Meaning, when you do invocation, salutation, prayer, your meditation practice, you do it with sincerity. You do it with sincerity, right? Because how many of us know Christian prayers? I was brought up Catholic in Massachusetts. How many of us know Christian prayers, Catholic prayers, Muslim prayers, Jewish prayers, that we know them backwards and forwards, but there's no sincerity, there's no understanding, there's no reverence. So we just say it and we go about our day, right? That's not what Master Cho is talking about in this sutra. He's talking about doing it with full consciousness and understanding to the best of your ability, with reverence and with sincerity. And the effect is going to be magnified many, 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 many times. At some point, we're going to do, we'll maybe do a live stream on invocations. We'll do a live stream on invocations and see what we experience versus doing it quickly versus doing it with understanding, doing it with reverence, doing it with sincerity. So Autumn says, especially when the ego is acting up, to actually sit with those emotions and become aware of them rather than rather than either running or reacting. Correct, 100%. Autumn just hit the nail on the spiritual head with one of the number one reasons as to why people do not meditate. One of the number one reasons why we don't meditate, we're always on our app, Alice, Atma Namaste, while we're always on our applications, Instagram, Facebook, texting, Twitter, we're on our laptop, we're on our phone, we're on our desktop, we're watching TV, a big, big reason as to why we're always being distracted, why our attention is always being pulled outward versus drawing it within, is because when we're still, guess what we start experiencing? The thoughts and the feelings that we've been avoiding for many, many years. And for a lot of us, those thoughts and those feelings aren't very pleasant, they aren't very warm and fuzzy, and we don't want to deal with them, right? So not only do we not sit still with our eyes closed, right, and go within, but we're also constantly going outside Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TV, etc. Does that make sense? It's not a judgment, it's just asking you to look at it clearly, go, well, wait a minute. If what Christian is saying about this whole like surrendering negative thoughts and negative emotions and allowing better thoughts and better emotions to come into my life, why wouldn't I give that a try? Why wouldn't I experiment with that? Why wouldn't I want to get feedback? Don't I want to have good thoughts and good feelings? Hmm. And then the next question you can ask yourself is, 
do I get those good thoughts and good feelings when I'm mindlessly going through social media? Right? Again, it's not a judgment. It's simply giving you an opportunity to practice awareness, to practice understanding, to practice self-honesty, right? No judgment. I have no judgment. If you want to spend 12 hours a day going through Instagram, go for it. It's, it's, your, uh, it's your incarnation. You have the free will to do that. So, spiritual success depends on your conductivity. No spiritual conductivity, no progress. Meaning, if you don't remove the anger, the, let's see, if you don't remove the pride, the arrogance, the old ideas, the old vices, anger, irritation, pain, and obstructing attitudes, huh, you missed the Twin Hearts Meditation. I understand. We, we do it on Zoom every Sunday, Autumn. 10 o'clock mountain time, a.m., every Sunday, rain, sleet, or shine, jump on. Uh, I don't know if that time works for you, but that's when we do it. So no spiritual conductivity, no progress. So those lower negative emotions and lower negative thoughts need to be removed. You need to surrender them over to God as a sacrifice, if you will, to allow the new energies to come into your life. I know in some ways this might sound, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It might sound very ethereal. Amar, Atma, Namaste, a very ethereal, it's hard to grasp, it's hard to understand. And that's why having a spiritual teacher is so important because they take very high level spiritual concepts and principles and they step them down in an easy to understand, digestible way so you can practice them. Because right now I'm saying spiritual success depends on your conductivity. No spiritual conductivity, no progress. So an ordinary person who knows nothing about spirituality or energy healing or meditation would say, well, how do you become conductive? How do you, how do you increase your conductivity? Well, we talked about invocation. We talked about prayer a little bit. So those two things help you become more conductive. And there are other things that accelerate the process of being conductive and receptive. And so how many have heard the term faith? Faith, for all of my uh, Christian brothers and sisters out there, right? We heard the term faith and said, how do you define faith? You know what I've noticed? This is not a judgment. This is something that I've made an observation over my 20 years on the path is if you take 10 people, right? If you take 10 people and ask 10 people, what is the soul? You're going to get 11 different answers. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? If you say, what is the soul? To 10 people, you'll get 11 different answers. Why is that? Has anyone ever wondered that? But if you talk to a medical doctor in the United States and you say, where is the femur? And you go to New Zealand and you ask a medical doctor, where is the femur? And you go to India and you ask a medical doctor, where is the femur? And you go to Spain and you ask a medical doctor, where is the femur? Do you think all four of those doctors are going to give you the same location of the femur? Or are they all going to give you four different locations of the femur? Hello? They're all going to give you the same location of the femur. Why is that not the case for spiritual teachings? For spiritual truths? One reason, there's many, but one reason why there isn't one religion that has the answers or one spiritual school that has the answers, or one meditation practice that has all the answers, or one spiritual teacher or guru that has all the answers, is because by the Great One's infinite intelligence, they spread spirituality around the world with this religion specializing in this, this spiritual school specializing in this, this charitable organization specializing in this, and all for the purpose to do what? to start bringing people together because they have 
through humility, have a recognition of, I think we're missing something in our school that will help humanity or help our school spread to more people. Huh. What can we do? Well, let's, let's start talking with the other Christians. So one Christian sect will start talking with the other Christian sects. And then you have the leaders of that Christian faith will start talking with the Buddhists. We'll start talking with the Hindus. We'll start talking with the... So what happens is we start becoming more one, right? And we start to see the oneness of our spiritual teachings and universal truth versus seeing the separation, which is called fundamentalism or fanaticism. And it should be avoided at all, all costs. So Autumn says, because that is not really something that can be described, only experienced. Now, yes, on one level, that is correct. So in the Bhagavad Gita, um, the commentary done by Satchitananda in the late 80s, he, he makes an excellent point. As soon as you start speaking about the infinite, you make it finite. As soon as you start giving form to the formless, you've already shortchanged the experience. So just to say the word God as a word, you're taking the infinite everything of the great, great, energy of God and you're putting into a word. So you're not getting the full understanding of it. So God cannot be understood mentally, emotionally, or physically. God can only be experienced outside of your limited bodies, the form of your physical body, the form of your emotional body, and the form of your mental body, right? Because as soon as you put the infinite in form, you've already lost it. You already have a little itty bitty tiny part of the picture. It's kind of like the the story of you have three people um, that are blindfolded. One is holding the tail of an elephant. One is holding the tusk of an elephant. And the other one is holding the trunk of an elephant. Those three people all think the thing that they're holding is the elephant. When in actuality... The person who stepped back, right, and looking with their eyes open, no blindfold on, they see the true form of the elephant. Josiah, I'm a namaste. So it's the same exact thing in the world of spirituality. As soon as you start talking about God, as soon as you start talking about the soul, as soon as you start talking about anything that is infinite, that is beyond comprehension, and you start giving it names and labels and forms, Right? It can only be experienced, like Autumn said. But here's the question. Here's the $64 million question. How do you experience the soul? Isn't that the question? So that is ultimately the purpose with every religion, every spiritual school. <laughs> Love you, bruh, bruh, bruh. Of course, Josiah, you the man, fellow Arahantic practitioner. Does that make sense? So every school has their specialization. Every church has their specialization of how to connect to the soul and how to, um, how to understand and experience the soul. Some schools work better for some people than others. Does that make sense? I remember when I started pranic healing and arhatic yoga in 2004, and I thought to myself, wow, everyone on the planet needs to practice arhatic yoga. You know what I realized many, many years later of hitting my head up against the wall, trying to convince people to practice arhatic yoga, is that Grandmaster Cho Koksui's plan was never for the populace, the general populace, to practice arhatic yoga. Arhatic yoga is for a, a small group of people to practice. I never knew that. I never realized that. Because it would be similar to running around saying, well, everyone should be an Olympian. Everyone should be an Olympian. Everyone should train 10 hours a day, 7 days a week for 10 years to put themselves in the position to compete in the Olympics. Everyone should do that. Hello? How realistic is that? 
not very realistic. It's not very practical, right? So that's why every school, every religion, and every spiritual practice has different ways of explaining the soul because they have different methodologies and techniques and practices to access the soul. And there are many ways to God, right? You have to find the path that most resonates with you, that makes the most sense with you, and then follow that path for a period of time. So I've been doing Arhatic Yoga. This year will be my 16th year practicing Arhatic Yoga because it is the one that makes the most sense to me and it's the one I've gotten the most fulfillment and ben- and benefits from in many, many different ways. Does that make sense? So the takeaway from today's talk is that surrender doesn't have to be a negative thing. Surrender doesn't have to have a negative connotation to it, right? In the typical ordinary world, right, we can say surrender does have a negative connotation because it means you're giving up your free will. It means you're giving up your resources. It means you're giving up your money. It means you're even giving up your body or life to someone else, but on the spirit and from the spiritual perspective surrender means giving up all the things that prevent you from being in alignment with your higher self and ultimately alignment with god and that is a lifetime process which people don't like to hear right we're we're in microwave society now 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 i want enlightenment now i want illumination now i want to know all my past lives now i want to be able to create Miraculous healings now. Well, how's that working out? (laughs) Right? It doesn't happen. Enlightenment does happen over time, but not overnight. And uh, as one of the pranic healing masters says, you do not become a saint by accident. You could meditate on that for the rest of your life, what that means. You do not become a saint by accident. It's pretty profound when you think about it. And when you integrate that. So that being said, if I can help you guys get just a centimeter closer to becoming a saint, please let me know by going to christianarlong.com. It's my name. It's my website. You can schedule a pranic healing session directly on that site and we can use it to transform your life. Uh, I've been honored enough to be trained directly by Grandmaster Cho Koksui and six of the world's eight pranic healing masters over the past 16 years. And I've been able to produce miraculous results for other people, including myself. I use the protocols on myself to produce miraculous. I was just thinking about all the miraculous healings, but it works, right? It works. Over time, not overnight in some cases. So Autumn says surrendering attachment. Yeah. Attachment to everything that is not who and what we are. Surrendering our attachment to the physical body. We still take care of the body. We still love the body, right? But we're not attached to the body. Surrendering our attachment to our feelings. So when somebody says something mean, cruel, or hurtful, and we get all butt hurt and offended by it, what's actually getting butt hurt and offended? Think about it. What's getting butt hurt and offended? The soul is like, whatever. I'm not the feelings. I'm not those hurtful words from the other person it's like whatever and then when we have our thoughts when you think about a good thing or think about a bad thing either way they're thoughts you're not the thoughts the thoughts are products that the soul creates but you're not the thought just like the carpenter is not the furniture that the carpenter makes he makes a chair the chair and the carpenter aren't the same thing right they're separate So your thoughts are thoughts that your soul created, but the thoughts and the soul are not the same thing. Ego for show, for show, for show. So anyways, I hope that helps. Um, My encouragement to each and every one of you is consistency in your spiritual practice. It's great to have the theory. It's great to have understanding as to what is what is and why we do what we do, right? Right? the theoretical understanding, but it turns into wisdom when we take the theoretical understanding, 
we apply it for a prolonged period of time in our lives and then we have experience and then we have wisdom. So I want each and every one of you to have wisdom, to know truth as truth is. Make sense? So thank you guys very, very much for joining this early live stream today. Felicia, you're late to the party, girl. Watch the replay, get value out of the replay, share the replay for other people who might benefit from it. And that is it. So I'm off to do some work. Lots of light, love, and power from God and my teacher, Grandmaster Cho Koksui, into your lives. May you be blessed. May you be healed. May you be filled with prosperity, abundance, and success in all ways, shapes, and forms. And I look forward to connecting with you very, very soon. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma. Namaste. Bye-bye.